This is the video for STAT 2070, Chapter 3. The sections that we're going to go over in this video are 3.2 about measures of center, 3.3 about measures of variation, and 3.4 about measures of relative standing and box plots. First of all, section 3.2 about measures of center. When we talk about center, we mean the center of a set of data. So we're talking about trying to find out where the middle of the data is. And we have several different ways to look at this. First of all, we can look at the mean, which is the same as the average. We can look at the median, which is the middle value in a sorted list of data. Or we can look at the mode, which is the most frequently occurring data value. Let's look a little bit more at the median. The median is the middle value when the original data values are arranged in order of increasing or decreasing magnitude. Usually we would arrange them from smallest to largest. The nice thing about the median as a measure of center is that it's not significantly affected by extreme values, so extremely large or extremely small values. Now to find the median, what we need to do is first sort the values. We arrange them in order from smallest to largest, and then we do two different things depending on whether we have an odd or an even number of data values. If the number of data values is odd, then the median is just the number located in the exact middle of the list. If the number of data values is even, then there will actually be two numbers in the exact middle of the list. So we find those two middle numbers and we compute the mean of those two numbers. In other words, we find those two numbers and find the average. So we add the two numbers together and divide by two. Here's some examples of finding the median. So example one, we have this list of six data values. Since that's an even number of values, that means we don't have one number that's in the exact middle of the list. We're going to have two values in the middle of the list. So our first step is to sort the list. So we're sorting from smallest to greatest. So since this is a very small list, we can just pick out these two middle numbers. They're the point 73 and the 1.10. Another way to find the positions of the two middle numbers if we would have a larger list is that since we have six data values, we take six and divide by two since we're trying to split the list in half. This would equal three. That tells us that the third and fourth positions in the list are our two middle values. So this one is in the third position. This one is in the fourth position. Now we're going to take those two values and average them. So we're adding them together and dividing by two. When we do that, we get 0.915. For the statistics that we're going to talk about in this chapter, the rule of thumb is that we're going to round to one decimal place more than what the data values are. So notice that these data values, the furthest that they any of them go out is to the hundredths place. So we would round to one more place past that. So we would round to the thousandths place. So if we had another decimal place here, we would round this to three decimal places. So we would round this to three decimal places for this set of data. Now let's look at another example. In this example, if we look at the number of data values, we actually have seven data values. And that means that we can sort our list and just pick out the number in the middle median is just going to be the middle value in the list. So if we sort it first, then the number in the middle of this list would be the 0.73. And again, if we have more values, sometimes it's hard to pick out the position, and it's hard to see just by looking at the data values which number is in the exact middle. So we could also do it like this. We have seven values. We divide seven by 2, which is 3.5. We would round this up to 4.
And that tells us that our middle value would be in the fourth position in the list. And notice that's where this one is. It's in the fourth position. So this time we don't have to do any averaging or anything. Our median is just that value. And again, just to make the point that we're rounding to one decimal place more than what our data values are, to be technically correct, we could write the median as 0 0.730. We could also write it as just 0.73. The next measure of center we want to talk about is the mode, and this is just the value that occurs with the greatest frequency. A data set can have one mode, it can have more than one, or it can have no mode at all. The important point about the mode is it's the only measure of center that we can use with nominal data. And here's just some terminology for the mode. If we say a set is bimodal, that means that it has two modes. So there are two different data values that occur with the same greatest frequency. Multimodal means that we have more than two modes, so more than two data values occur with the same greatest frequency. And no mode means that no data value is repeated. So let's look at some examples for finding the mode. For the mode, we don't have to sort the list. Sometimes it's helpful, but if we have a short list like this, we can just pick out any values that are repeated. The only value that's repeated here is the 1.10. Every other value only occurs once. Since the 1.10 occurs twice, that means it's the mode. Now if we look at this list, we have 27 occurring three times. We have 55 occurring three times. The 88 only occurs twice, and the 99 only occurs once. So our two values with the greatest frequency are the 27 and the 55. Since they both occur three times, then each one is the mode. So this data set is bimodal, meaning it has two modes, and the two modes are 27 and 55. Now finally for this set, if we look through this list, there's no value that's repeated, so this set would have no mode. And again, our round off rule for measures of center is that we carry them to one more decimal place than is present in the original set of values. We don't have to worry about this with the mode because the mode is just a count of how many times a value occurs. So this is only for the mean and the median. When we're finding measures of center, First of all, we want to think about whether the results we got are reasonable. In other words, whether they make sense. And also, as always, think about the method used to collect the sample data. Now, we can also find a mean or an average from a frequency distribution. Consider the situation where the only thing that we do know about the data is a frequency distribution that someone else created. If we want to get an idea of what the mean of that data set is, then we just have to use the frequency distribution because we don't have all of the data values to be able to average them. The way that we do this is that for each class in the frequency distribution, we assume that all of the values in that class are equal to the class midpoint. And here's the actual formula to find the mean from a frequency distribution. The F stands for the frequency. X for this is going to stand for the class midpoint. And this symbol means that you're going to add all the values together. So what this is telling you to do for each class to multiply the frequency times the class midpoint. But once you've done that for each class, then you're going to add those values together. And then you're going to divide by the sum of the frequencies. Here's an example. Here's our frequency distribution. So our first step is going to be to find the class midpoints for each one of these classes. And remember to find a class midpoint, we take the lower and upper class limits and average them. 
or go exactly halfway between the two. And one way to do that is to take the two values, add them together, and divide by 2. So here if we take 0 plus 3 and divide that by 2, we're going to get 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. Now we can do this for each one. So for this one we'd have 4 plus 7 divided by 2, which gives us 11 divided by 2, which is 5.5. Now remember, the shortcut for finding class midpoints is if you use the class width, you can just use that pattern and add the class width to each class midpoint to get the rest of them. So let's go back over here and look at our class width. Remember to find this, you look at two consecutive lower class limits and see how far apart they are. So from 0 to 4 is 4 units, and that means our class width equals 4. If you look at the two values that we already found over here, notice that these are 4 apart. If we added 4 to 1.5, we would get 5.5. So we can get the rest of these by just adding 4. 5.5 plus 4 is 9.5. We add another 4, we get 13.5. We add another 4, we get 17.5. So those are all, all of our class midpoints. Now for each one of those class midpoints, we're going to take the class midpoint times the frequency for that particular class. For this first one, we'll take 12 times the 1.5. That's going to give us 18. For the second one, we'll have 33 times 5.5, which is equal to 181.5. For the third class, we have 15 times 9.5, which gives us 142.5. For the next one, we have 10 times 13.5, that gives us 135. And last of all, we have 5 times 17.5, and that gives us 87.5. Now, the next step is to add up all of the values that we just got. So these values where we had multiplied the frequency times the midpoint, we're going to add all of those. So if we add, we get 564.5. The last step is to divide this sum by the sum of the frequencies. So one thing we need to do first is go back and add all these frequencies together. If we add all of these, we get 75. So now we're going to take our 564.5 divide by 75, and that gives us 7.527. Now, how much are we going to round this? Well, the data values in our classes over here go to zero decimal places. So we're going to round this to one decimal place. and that gives us 7.5. So this is our estimated mean for this data set. We say estimated because we're just basing it on the frequency distribution and we don't have actual data values. Now one thing to do with this is go back, look at your data, and see if this makes sense. So does 7.5 look like a reasonable mean for this data set? Does it look like a value that would be close to the center of the data set? If we look at our frequency distribution, the class with the highest frequency was 33.
which tells us that our center is probably somewhere around this set of values from 4 to 7. Since we have more values above those than there are below, then that tells us that our mean would probably be a little bit larger than the upper limit of this class. And that makes sense with the mean that we found of 7.5. Now to sum up about which measure of center is best in which situation, here are the three measures of center that we talked about. We didn't even talk about the mid-range here. As it says here, the mid-range is rarely used anyway. So we didn't even talk about this one. But we have mean, median, and mode. To find the mean, it's just the average. So you add all the values together and then divide by the number of values. The problem with the mean is that it is sensitive to extreme values. So an extremely small or an extremely large value can skew the mean. For the median, to find the median, we sort the data and then we do the two different things depending on whether we have an odd or an even number of data values. And the median is usually a good choice if there are some extreme values because it's not affected by those in the way that the mean is. And finally for the mode, we just count values that occur more than once and the value that occurs the most in the data set is our mode. And remember the mode is especially good for data at the nominal level of measurement. In fact, it's the only measure of center we can use for data at this level. Now when we talk about the shape of a data distribution, when we say something is symmetric, that means that the left and the right half of a histogram are close to being mirror images. If we have a histogram that looks something like this, we could pick out the center of our data, would be just be in the middle of our histogram here, and we draw a line right through the middle of that bar, then we have roughly a mirror image on either side of that line. So the left half of this is a mirror image of the right half. On the other hand, we say a data distribution is skewed if it's not symmetric and it extends more to one side than the other. So a skewed distribution could have a histogram that looks something like this. This is definitely not symmetric. If you pick out just the middle of these bars, right here, we definitely don't have a mirror image on the left and the right sides of this. Now there are two different types of skewness. If we say something is skewed to the left or negatively skewed, this means that it has a longer tail on the left. And this is confusing because it's counterintuitive. So the important point here is that it has a longer tail on the left and this usually means that the bulk of the data is actually on the right. So this would be something like this, if we had a picture of our distribution. Notice that here the tail on the left side is longer, the bulk of the data is over here on the right end, so this would be skewed to the left. Skewed to the right is just the opposite thing. This means that it has a longer tail on the right and the bulk of the data is on the left side. A distribution that's skewed to the right would look something like this. So we have the bulk of our data on the left side and we have a longer tail to the right. Now sometimes we can tell something about the skewness of a set of data by looking at where the mean and the median are located in relation to each other. But we can't always count on that. So I'll show you this, but keep in mind that this isn't always the case. It is with a symmetric distribution, however. If we have a symmetric distribution, that tells us that the mean and the median are basically in the same location. If we have a distribution that's skewed to the left, usually this means that the mean is to the left of the median. 
If we have a distribution that's skewed to the right, usually this means that the mean is to the right of the median. As I said, for these two, this isn't always exactly the case, so we can't count on that. But this does, does give you a nice picture of a symmetric distribution, a distribution that's skewed to the left, notice how it has a longer tail to the left, and a distribution that's skewed to the right with a longer tail on the right. 